Welcome back. On this week's Four Downs, we're changing gears. We're talking about the Edmonton Oilers. They've won one game in their last 15. The firing of Dallas Eakins is definitely a good move with regards to the organization. But is Craig McTavish's ego standing in the way of seeing some success with this organization? We welcome back TSN 690. Simon Slake, it's great to see you. Okay. To your right, Anthony Cornelli, thanks for coming back. And of course, David Hurley, great to see you. All right, gentlemen, finally, Dallas Eakins gets fired. It's one step in the right direction. Is this going to be the epitome? Is this going to be the change that Edmonton needs? I don't know. I think it's a cultural thing, and it's a very scary thing. I grew up watching the New York Islanders, and it win four Stanley Cups and be the class of the National Hockey League. And, then, then and you think, oh, they're going to taper off a little bit, and they'll get some draft picks, and then they'll rebuild. It's been 25 years since they've been relevant. The same we can say about the Raiders. It, <laughs> once that culture seeps into your locker room, that's why I don't believe in tanking and going out and getting yeah. a draft pick. Winning hockey games is very important because you got to keep that losing mentality, that losing culture out of your locker room. And how do you shake it? There's been teams that have been bad for 20 years. The Clippers, the Cleveland Browns. But is he, is he the one to be, is he the one no. to be blamed? No, this has oh. to start entirely like any listen. other corporation. It starts at the top. It doesn't stop with you. I think, it doesn't I think start Craig with McTavish is, go looks back at his career in time and he must think to himself, I should have wore a helmet because some of these decisions that yeah. he's made are terrible. <laughs> Uh, the draft picks. He's paying the same prototypical player every year, mm -hmm. year in, year out. And then what does he do? Is this great free agent signing? Benoit Pouliot, give him $20 million. Are you kidding me Even right Andrew now? Andrew Ferentz was it, a great Andrew pick, Ferentz is supposed to be your up. leader player on the team. Yeah. He's not a leader guy. Yeah. I mean, I, the whole atmosphere, like you said, in the locker room needs to change. And this is what the problem with the NHL is. They always go after a, an old player and say he's got the pedigree to do it. No, he doesn't. He was just a player, and you're hoping that he has the pedigree no. to do it. For me, this is a rebuild 2.0. It's the second stage of rebuilding for the Oilers after eight. I think it's a 20.0 at yeah, this stage. It's, 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 it's eight, eight years a while, without man. a playoff appearance. I mean, if you look at Pittsburgh, LA, Chicago, they rebuild. They rebuild properly. Well, they went it out. Took, they it drafted took them, well. It yeah. took, it took yeah. them a while, but they drafted. They cleaned out the Oilers. The Oilers drafted well yeah. with, uh, you know, Hopkins and Nugent Hopkins and Yakupov, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But yeah. where are they now? Well, but the Oilers didn't go. The, the the Blackhawks didn't go and get Denny Savard and, and, and Steve Thomas. Yeah. They went and got guys that they went and got guys that fit the profile. That their CV said this is the best person for the job, for the and, job. and they haven't done that. They kept it in that old boys network. How yeah. excited are you now that Dallas Eakins is gone? Maybe it's a lot of the ego was playing them into play. They're going to let these kids play. I mean, that's ultimately what you want to do with these young guys. You want to let them play. You don't want to create too much of a system either for but these guys to be in. Was that the issue with how, Dallas Eakins? How good are these kids, though? Are we certain yeah. that they're that good? Taylor Hall is a quality hockey player. We go back to that draft. He's not the number one pick yeah, anymore. Tyler it's Tyler Sagan. Sagan. For Absolutely. years, I, we thought Tyler, uh, Taylor Hall was Taylor, a better Tyler. player. So uh, Nugent Hopkins... Everly, Everly, you know, they scored big goals. But at the, in same, time, but at the same time, you're basing that on the fact that they haven't stepped to the plate yet. They haven't had a system in which well, we can have to manage every time. Though, even right? management gave them a contract. Instead of giving them a bridge contract, mm -hmm. like Mark Bergevin has done with the Montreal Canadiens, he's gone straight out and given them $5 million. Well, when you do that, you're impeding your team. You can't get free agent talent in the league when you're already maximized on these rookies who haven't really done much in the league. And that's where the organization's gone wrong. And it's, it's look at the product, it's terrible. Dallas I feel bad for what Dallas Oilers fans. paid the price. Craig Matavish still has a job. It's four or five coaches yeah, the Orioles yeah. have been to in the last four yeah. or five years. Why don't we start looking at Kevin Lowell and yeah. what he's doing? And forget about Kevin Lowell, the owner. The ownership Del needs Cass. to sell the team. He's more sell worried about hanging out yeah. with his dynasty buddies yeah. than he is on building a winning team. And the Oilers have a cult following. How long are the followers, the fans, going to come out after not making the playoffs fun, for the eight years. Fun fact with the owners, when he started that oil change television show, that kind of a behind the scenes look yeah. of the Oilers. It was supposed to be an oil change, supposed to be something that's quick mm -hmm. and a rebuild. Well, that oil change series is gonna take 20 years before that series, that team becomes relevant again. And they really gotta change everything from top to bottom. It's a sad, sad day in Edmonton. That's How sure. difficult is it going to be for the next coach in Edmonton to bring about any kind of change when we take a look at the power of McTavish. Now, I'm not sure it's difficult on the coach. I think it's difficult right now on Craig McTavish. Who is going to sit behind that bench? You try the good cop, the bad cop, the, the, the X's and O's guy. What are you going to go? Are you going to get the guy who's going to crack the whip? They've gone through everybody. And, yeah. I, and right now, I just don't know what you're... There's a complete overhaul. You need to trade two or the three young studs. You, do, you, need, you need to address the needs on the back end. You need to get some, you know... Uh, Grinders, you know, Benoit Pouillat is a terrible, that's a fireable offense. Yeah, yeah. Benoit Pouillat is a fireable offense. $20 million for that guy offense. is way too much. Well, stay right there because after the break, we're moving into our Pretender Contender segment as we discuss something completely different. The 49ers have not made playoffs. They will not be making playoffs this year. The question is, is Colin Kaepernick a pretender or a contender? Stay with us. All that and more, all right here on Read Between the Lines.